Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I'm going to respond to an email that I got. A couple of different questions here in this email. I think it's important to, um, to address and to talk about. So first of all, um, the email says, I, I have a question for you. Since you know that life is eternal, and we plan our lives beforehand, why do you get so emotional with a channeling like Viktor Frankl? Okay, so there's two parts to this. First, I need to clearly need to clarify here that of, I, of course I believe that life is eternal, our soul is eternal, um, but as far as what you state about um, we plan our lives beforehand. I do not believe in a set fate or in a structure to our destiny where there are very specific things that we craft this brilliant plan before we come into this lifetime. I do believe there's life themes and patterns. Yes, I believe it's more like an outline made with pencil that can be adjusted, a bullet point, if you will. And it does not articulate our life plan, does not articulate specific exacting experiences, point in time, or even people that we come into contact with in our lifetime. I believe it's far more co-creative than that, because after all, I believe that we predict, we don't, we don't predict our lives, we create our lives. So, so I believe I, so yes, the first half of what you shared is accurate from my belief standard of life is eternal, 100%. Okay, and then I clarified that plan our lives beforehand piece. I think that's important because it's kind of layered and some people might not understand what you mean there, you know. I need to be clear what I mean there. So then the question you ask is awesome. Why do you get so emotional with a channeling like Viktor Frankl? Good question. I think this is a fair question because I'm a psychic medium. I'm also a person. I have feelings. I do. I have emotions. And one of my greatest gifts, I believe, is my heart. The empath channel. The channel of clairsentience. Clairsentience is a psychic gift. It's probably one of my greatest psychic gifts, yet it is a tough one to manage and navigate. And something as emotional as connecting with Viktor Frankl, at the time that I did the channeling, I myself was exploring and working through some of my own personal life shadows and, and willing to work on like making changes so that I would feel better, more inspired, not so, um, so much pressure to perform or to show up for other people, kind of random people. It's like, it's like what is most important to me? I was really kind of soul searching and going through what is most important to me? What is my purpose here? What do I do to contribute? Instead of letting like random people's opinions or viewpoints determine what I don't do or do, you know what I mean? Like there was a lot of, I was feeling a lot of pressure and I was feeling a lot of, um, disconnection from purpose. And so I was doing a lot of soul searching. And so I thought, I don't even remember how it came to be Viktor Frankl that I wanted to channel, but he came into my mind of when I was thinking about people that were inspiring, people that have this incredible spirit, this powerful, profound understanding of life of how precious life is and how strong and eternal the human spirit is. And it's not just about like suffering and working through our problems, but it's this incredible through insurmountable odds, he transcended his circumstances and still connected with this purest, most beautiful part of himself and hope, this resilient, hopeful energy. I was in, inspired by that and and I wanted to feel a I wanted to feel that for myself um, again to be inspired again and if, uh, on purpose you know for purpose really connected to purpose and so in channeling with Viktor Frankl I felt all the emotions of channeling of all the reasons why I didn't want to do channeling throughout the summer of 2020 because of all the intense mass exodus. There were so many dead people from the health crisis that had mass and mass and are still, at this point that I'm recording this, they're still transitioning over. 
but it's a little different now. It's not as as this big intense feeling of collective grief and anger and and um, frustration and all the people here that couldn't actually bury their loved ones or couldn't have memorials or funerals and all this grief stuff that I have been like, I can't possibly handle that in my feeling channel. That's why I haven't done mediumship. That's why I didn't do a lot of channeling with brand new people, like random people, where in the past, maybe I could do that pretty easily, you know, do like an interview and get to know that afterlife spirit. Now I feel such deeper meaning to life itself where I feel like the preciousness of life needs to be valued and honored, at least through my work. And so Above Life Channel might seem like it's just entertainment. It's, it's far more than just entertainment. Just because we happen to talk to celebrities or people that are well-known and famous doesn't mean that it's only an entertainment thing. Like that's the only substance that they can provide to us. That their history, their legacy, their messages can provide far greater than that so many more lessons and messages about life and incredible advice from the afterlife and inspiration is really gained from these people that you have looked up to that you've heard about and just a better understanding of human people human life just because we put somebody on a pedestal because they have this awesome singing gift for example it doesn't mean they're not a real person they don't have heart emotions and feelings and they might not get moved or or feel sad or shed a tear when they're singing something beautiful or they hear a beautiful artist. Well, when I was channeling with Viktor Frankl, I could feel all of the emotion. And for me, it was so incredibly powerful, just profound. I literally feel like my heart was open and I was just receiving and everything was flowing over. And, and for me, like the pain and the suffering also mixed in with the hope and the resilience and the power of the human spirit and the kindness and the capacity for forgiveness just blow blew me wide open like i'm like okay now i'm on, now i'm in the zone to channel now i can channel oh yes i can channel people oh yes i can because there's new purpose renewed purpose renewed meaning for my work right that's exactly how i felt so yes very emotional for me very emotional so the second part of your question says, um, aren't we really playing a role down here on earth? So a soul like this, like Viktor Frankl, knew what he was getting into. I'm not saying it is not sad from a human perspective. We are eternal beings. So doesn't that take away the sting of death? I don't think so. The fact that if you think about this in very real terms, the sting of death, like grief, I mean, of course you're going to grieve just because you know there's a greater purpose for someone's life if they're an organ donor and, and they pass on, you know, and they, they end up saving other people's lives or just because they lived a full life and they're like 96 years old and they, they die. It doesn't make it any less painful because when you're in family with someone or in relationship with someone and they're not there anymore, you're going to grieve the loss of it. And so I don't think death hurts any less because it's a separation. It still feels like that. We're humans and we have to look at this through the lens of human, human emotion and human feeling and human relationship. That's really key. That's extremely important to do that. So I don't think it takes away at all um, the sting. Mm -mm. No, there might be at some point some, some level of comfort in the grief, grief process knowing that that person that you love is is at peace and not suffering from their illness any longer. Um, but I don't think it just makes the pain go away. Mm -mm. I don't think so. It's It's been, oh gosh, how many years since dad's died? Like 17, 18, 19 years this year for me since my dad passed away. And I've been a woke psychic for 17 years. And I don't, it doesn't feel any less painful that I don't have my dad here. It doesn't feel any less painful that he hasn't met um, three of my four kids in human form, that my kids don't have a grandpa. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't feel any less painful. <laughs> this thing is, even though the purpose of part of his life lessons, uh, I can understand and, and use to inspire me for my life, to live the best life I can, to be my full authentic self. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really take this thing away. Um, 
Aren't we really just playing a role here on Earth? It's, it's really tricky to say this because it feels like there's an, a detachment. I'm kind of feeling a detachment in the questioning, the questions here. Um, whereas stepping away and looking at it like very philosophical or very intellectualized kind of transcends the whole point of any channeling experience or any um, sort of deep psychic connection like this because the point is to feel to allow emotion to be present at the same time understand um, energy and intuition and spirit as well as the human life. Anytime you try to separate one from the other, that just creates separation. That's not the point. The point is inclusion. The point is integration. The point is learning. So we have to include all the aspects of who we are. So I don't believe that we're just playing a role. I think we do have purpose and meaning and that our lives are, are, are much more of value in a human body than maybe um, if you were making the comparison between your human body experience versus your spiritual experience, it seems like, oh, the spiritual experience is so much better. I'm like, well, but then why do we come back in to wanna be people? Maybe, just maybe, the sensory experiences of being able to physically see the color light blue in the sky or to smell the flowers when they're blooming in the springtime or to see um, a bird fly and spread their wings and to watch a gorgeous sunrise or to cuddle up with your cat or to hold a baby. I mean, all of these things are very sensory. And while clairsentience is a psychic gift of sensing feeling, it combines the energy of emotion with the energy of sensory experiences. It, it brings in this, um, for me at least, incredible awareness that the human life is so short and so precious because it gives us the opportunity to have experiences as a spirit in a body. And our human physical body is just as important as your mind, as your heart, and as your soul, the physical human embodiment. Now that's one place where we could do all use a lot of work, right? We overuse our bodies, we overwork our bodies, we mistreat our bodies, myself included. We go through stages and phases of our lives where we just don't pay attention to our bodies, we overwork our bodies, we overstress our bodies, and we maybe aren't feeding it as healthy stuff because we're just grabbing a coffee again or just eating fast food or something, you know? There's a lot to be said for embodiment and the physical human body, so, all right. I really do appreciate your questions and they really spurred an opportunity for me to be able to expand on some of these topics based on, like I said, the 17 years of being a woke psychic, um, actually working as a psychic in a medium for that long and it makes me sound super old when I say that. It's almost like two decades worth of actual psychic work for other people. Um, even though my entire life, if you've watched me talk about my psychic story here on Above Life channel, or as I share it on Fairy Grasshopper channel on YouTube, um, I've, I've been psychic and intuitive. I've had paranormal experiences and such my entire lifetime. I mean, starting from the early age of like four. So um, it's just kind of been normal to me, <laughs> you know? So it gives me an opportunity to kind of reframe some of the um, experiences and the things that maybe I just take for granted because the psychic, so my psychicness is just such a normal part, natural. It's really natural for me that I, uh, questions like this gives me an opportunity to reframe and maybe to clarify some points and things as you are watching Above Life channel here on YouTube. So thanks so much for the questions. I really do appreciate it. And you as viewers, go ahead and comment below this video um, on, on the responses and the things that I've shared um, in regards to this question. Thank you so much for asking. It is very much appreciated. I'm not gonna share your name because it looks like you might have used your work email and I don't really wanna call you out like that. <laughs> so I, I won't do it, but thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you viewers here at Above Life Channel. You always add value in your comments, supporting each other, encouraging us, each other and expanding the opportunity for learning, for just pondering and considering the perspectives that are shared here. All right. All right. So I hope I, I hope that I've inspired your spirit. I'm sure I've perked your curiosity a bit today, maybe filled you up with some hope. That would be great encouragement to live your life, your very best life. It's your life after all. It's yours. <laughs> so live it. Just live it.
Thanks for being here. Ooh, ooh. Before you leave, make sure you subscribe to Above Life Channel so you never miss a new video. Check me out on YouTube as well on my Fairy Grasshopper, my more casual vlogging channel that I do. Um, other kinds of psychic stuff over there and in addition to my intuitive coaching work as well on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube. You can find me on social media at the Facebook page of Bridget Inspired and Instagram Bridget Inspired. Thanks for watching.